What's going on guys? Right here we have Jeff's fifth gen foreigner. This thing is pretty much brand new. It's a 2023 with just over 6,000 miles on it. And uh, he brought it to us to install over $20,000 worth of parts, which we have waiting for it inside. When he comes to pick this thing up, it's gonna be a completely different foreigner. So make sure you stay tuned. Let's go ahead, pull it in and see what we got. So we got his 4Runner pulled in and this is everything right here that we need to install on it. So let's quickly go over everything and then we can go ahead and get the 4Runner on the lift. So for suspension, he went with the Bilstein BP51 kit. This has front coilovers, uh, external reservoirs. This is gonna be really nice. We're gonna be pairing that with some 285, 70 Mickey Thompson AT tires. And then those are wrapped around some method wheels. Those are a 17 by eight and a half with a zero offset. So we have five of those, one to go along with the C4 rear bumper. So moving on to armor, we have that and he's got the dual swing out option for it. Also, we have the C4 low pro bumper with the high clearance extensions. So to go along with that C4 low pro bumper, he has a 10,000 pound worn winch and we also have some diode dynamics lighting down there. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we have the 30 inch light bar here. That's gonna be for the front bumper. We have a 42 inch that's gonna be going on the roof rack. We have some pod lights here for ditch lights and for the factory fog light location on the fifth gen 4Runner. And then we have some Baja Designs lights there. Those are gonna be going in the rear bumper. To power all that lighting, he has the eight gang switch panel and bracket from Yoda Expedition. It's gonna make it a super clean install. And then he also has Cali raised rock sliders and we have a Sherpa roof rack to go along with it. And then some of the other things that I didn't get to yet, we have an air compressor by ARB. We have some headlights here by Morimoto. We have a ladder from Gobi and more. I'm sure I'm missing a couple things, but now we have to go ahead and move all of this stuff out of our way so we can get the 4Runner on the lift. So let's go ahead and do that. tomorrow morning we're gonna get this thing up on the lift and we're gonna start ripping it apart it's the next day and I have a bunch of stuff I need to rip off of this thing so I'm just gonna go ahead and get into it and pull everything off of this forerunner that needs to come off
Okay, day one, Corey's doing the tear down. He's got the front and rear bumpers off, the OEM intake out. He's got the crash bar off and a couple other odds and ends like the factory skid plates, if that's what you don't even want to call them. He's now moving on to pulling out all of the OEM suspension because this customer is getting the BP51 kit. So we're really excited to get that installed. Uh, seems like Corey thinks that's probably the best place to start. That way, if we need to lower the truck down back on the wheels, we can do that for anything else we might need to access. So um, let's get that pulled out of there. All right, so here in front of me, I have the upper control arm that we took off. These are the OEM ones. You can see they're just like a stamped sheet metal. They're kind of rounded around for rigidity, and they do have your standard ball joint and rubber bushings. Performance upgrades for upper control arms will have a Heim joint. These are a lot better for performance reasons, but they require a lot of service. So if this is going on an overland vehicle and you need the best reliability, or if it's going on a vehicle that you might drive every day, the old man emus here also have the same type of sealed ball joint and it is serviceable and it has a grease fitting and then you also have the rubber bushings back here. These are going to be a lot better for vehicles so you don't have to service them as often and you obviously will be able to replace this ball joint when it wears out. And you can see here compared to the OEM I have them lined up. It does correct for the lift kit so that it keeps your suspension geometry in the proper uh, spots so you can get your alignment just right. So I think at this point I have almost everything off the 4Runner that needs to come off, minus a couple of small things for when we do the rear bumper. All the suspension's taken out, the front bumper's off, the headlights are out. Um, I gotta drop the spare down yet, we're gonna be taking that out. But at this point I think I can start putting some of the new suspension components back in it and uh, keep going from there. So on the rear, so far I got the new springs in from ARB and uh, we got this traction bar correction kit from Dr. KDSS. So essentially when you lift your vehicle, um, you want this track bar to be level. It's level from factory, but when you lift it, it gets out of whack. So instead of it bolting down here, it is now gonna be bolting up here or up here, you have an adjustment. So once we get this thing on the ground, the lift kit installed, I'll see where this uh, track bar is sitting and then I can go ahead and get it in the appropriate bolt hole and we'll go ahead and tighten that down. All right, I think I'm gonna call it on day one. I got pretty far, I got everything off. I got all the suspension out. The rear has all the brand new suspension put in. And then up front, I started doing some stuff. I have the brand new control arms in here. So tomorrow morning when I get back into it, I'm going to get the new BP51 coilovers in there and the spacers for the sway bar and uh, tighten up everything on the front for the suspension. And then we can move on to something else. Tis the next day, I'm gonna go ahead 
finish up the front suspension and then I'm gonna probably move on to the front bumper. I'm gonna get the factory bumper cover cut and then we can start fitting the new headlights, the C4 bumper with the winch and light bar and uh, start getting all of the front end buttoned up. Uh, that should be the goal for today. Front suspension is all in, got the coilovers in there. I just have to mount the reservoirs yet to the bracket and I have to go ahead and torque all of this stuff down. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the forerunner back up in the air and take out these bolts here for the sway, uh, sway bar. I'm going to put the sway bar spacers in there and um, that should be pretty much it for the suspension and we can move on to the front bumper. Okay, Corey just finished up getting all of the Old Man Emu BP-51 kit installed. He just buttoned up the front end. Nothing's tight yet, but we have it all sitting in here. These are really, really premium shock. You have an adjustable lower spring seat, and you also have fine adjustment up top. These are also bound and rebound adjustable, so you can dial it in for exactly how much uh, weight you might have up front or whatever you're carry, uh, carrying in the back as well. Earlier I mentioned that the kit includes these upper control arms which move the ball joint so that it keeps your suspension geometry correct. But it also includes the sway bar spacers. Not only does it space the sway bar down, but it also moves it forward to make sure that geometry stays correct as well. Date. We got the front bumper all cut, at least rough. I'll probably have to do some massaging with the uh, flap disc once we go and fit it. And I also got the um, shrouds here on the radiator cut. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the front bumper over. I'm gonna get the winch mounted to the bumper, the light bar mounted to the bumper, and then we can go ahead and hang that on the front of the Forerunner. So the last time we did a C4 bumper with the diode light bar, the brackets that come with the light bar aren't specifically made to fit on this bumper. So I had to make small little pieces to make this, uh, make this combination work. I'm gonna have to go ahead and obviously do the same thing. So I have the factory brackets on here. I have them on backwards so that the mounting point is facing in. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and make small little extensions for these brackets in order to make it work. <laughs> All right, 
So as you can see, the factory hole is back here. I made this little piece to move the hole up here. And that's gonna allow this to mount to the light bar and then this is going to mount to the factory uh, mounting hole that they have here inside the C4 bumper, just like so. It's the end of day two. We got the front suspension all wrapped up, got the OEM bumper cover all cut, and we have the front bumper mounted up with the winch inside and the light bar. So I'm gonna finish up that tomorrow. We can get the headlights installed and go ahead and fit the OEM bumper cover. I'll probably have to do some trimming on that to get it to fit nicely. And after that is done, we can move on to the next step. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Whew. Almost ate it on the crack. All right, real quick, while Corey gets the front bumper buttoned up just a little bit, I wanted to step in and just say that if you guys are interested in pretty much any of the parts we're gonna be installing in this video, you can find them all on yodaexpedition.com. If you have any questions about anything you're seeing, please put it down in the comments and Corey will get back to you with an answer. Also, if you guys live on the East Coast, we're in Pennsylvania and you wanna have us install some parts for you, you can email us at installation at yodaexpedition.com. And uh, if you're on the West Coast and wanna take a trip, you can also email us for an install. We'll be happy to help you out if you're willing to make the trip to see us. If you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the Yoda Expedition YouTube channel, hit that button now because we are going to be organizing a giveaway for one of our lucky subscribers in 2024. You won't want to miss out. All right, day three. I'm going to pull the camera off the tripod and get in here and show you guys what Corey's working on. wires up to the battery, to the battery. So right now I'm working on rewiring the Raptor lights. Originally he had the wiring running into the cabin and going into the fuse box, but we're putting some brand new uh, Morimoto headlights on here. And while I'm doing that, he wants me to wire the Raptor lights into the running lights so that when he turns his running lights on, the Raptor lights come on as well. So they are not on all the time like they were before. So that'll be pretty easy to do once we get there. So he's also getting one of our auxiliary power kits. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just run the wire through the firewall that's gonna be going to the switch panel while I'm already down there crawling around. Every dang time. Never fails. Oh, that's a nice one. So I want you guys to take a guess. How long do you think it's gonna to take to do this whole entire job? Comment down below how many hours you think it's gonna to take to do everything that we're doing to this 4Runner. So I'm just gonna go ahead now. We're at the point where we are ready to fit the front bumper, um, but it is really difficult to get it all tucked in here around the bull bar and getting the bumper past 
this part here on the extension, so I'm just putting some tape on the headlights so we don't have to worry about uh, scratching that up or scratching the front part of the fender here because it's going to be pretty hard to get it maneuvered in there properly and get it fitted up. So after I'm done taping this, we're going to go ahead and try to get this thing fitted. My finger, yeah, that's what it was pinching my finger. Can't get it in front, okay. You good, it's in front of the bumper. Well, it's on, it's hard to say if you need to trim that or not. But this side's pretty close, this side's close, but I think it's good. So, I got the bumper fitted up. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this section here a little bit, it's a little tight right in here. We're pretty good. And yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the grinding wheel, the flat or the flap disc. I'm gonna hit this section a little bit. That way we can have the nice equal gap all the way down the side here. I think this looks pretty good here. Let's go ahead and do this section up here. This is rubbing yet. That side's looking good. We're gonna go ahead now and do this side. So obviously gonna trim some off right in this section so that it matches the gap here. And I have to do a little bit right in here and we should be good. <clears throat> what is it, day four? Today is day four. Day four. All right guys, it's day four. Corey has the front bumper all worked out. This thing is on for good. We're not taking it back off. Now it's time to uh, just get all the stuff down in here sorted out, but we have to wire up all the Raptor lights, the light bar in the bumper. Corey's working on the power kit because moving forward, there's gonna be a bunch of electronic uh, things that need to get hooked up to that. So we just wanna have that ready. Just making sure all the wiring is put away real nice and uh, getting it all hooked up to the battery, including the winch. The winch is getting hooked up today also. And then we'll just test all this out and um, maybe move on to the compressor today. What do you think? Yeah, either I'm gonna button everything up under the hood today. If I don't do the compressor, then I'm gonna go to the back of the truck, start on the rear bumper, at least getting all of the brackets taken off that need to come off, uh, drop the rear, uh, the spare tire. That doesn't need to be there anymore. I can get rid of that. Um, there's some things back there that I need to massage with a mount or with a hammer. So I can do that in preparation to get the rear bumper on. But right now I just want to focus on getting all of this buttoned up, uh, getting the Raptor lights hooked up the way he wants them, getting the winch hooked up and uh, getting all of this just tidied and looking good so that we can just check the front off the list. Yeah, so once this is done, it's sounding like probably Monday, we're going to make the transition to the rear of the truck, get that uh, rear bumper assembled. We did a full rear bumper on Justin's build on our channel. If you wanna check that out, the video is down in the description. But this one is the same C4 bumper, but this customer added the dual swing outs for their spare tire and for some traction boards and jerry cans and things like that. So um, let's jump into today and let's get the front of the 4Runner all buttoned up. over here making a harness for the bumper light bar. Since uh, Jeff is going with our auxiliary power kit, he doesn't need to buy the full harness from Diode with the relays and everything built in because all that's built right into our kit. So Corey's just taking the diode pigtail and adding some lengths of wire to connect it directly into the auxiliary power kit. So we got that harnessed, finished up. 
super simple. It's literally just a power and ground with a plug on it that diode gives you for the light bar. And that's all we need. We don't need relays or anything like that into the wiring harness. Everything is built in right to the switch panel here. So all the relays and stuff are in that. So we can eliminate a bunch of unnecessary wiring. So we can go ahead and uh, plug this in and test it out, make sure it works. So we're going to go ahead now and work on getting the ditch lights mounted. Uh, we have to unbolt the hood hinge and put the bracket in between there and the hood, bolt it back in. So I just have some tape on here to protect the edges of the hood and the fender. I also have some tape on there to help me kind of get everything aligned back where it was when I go to bolt everything back together. So I'm going to have Jared put the camera on the tripod and he's going to give me a hand holding the hood so that things not flopping everywhere while we try and get this thing bolted on. Just make this flush with the front of that because it is a big So we got the ditch lights mounted up. Now I'm going and wiring those. He wants these wired in with the running lights, just like the fog lights down here and the Raptor lights. So this harness has three wires, your power, your ground, and then this one here, the blue wires for the back lighting. So I separated that from the rest of the harness. The power and ground is going to be running over to the switch panel to run off a switch. And then the blue wire is going to come down the side here and tie in with this fog light so we can get power for the back lighting. Zip ties on that so it's not dangling down. Cut it to length, put it into our switch panel. are working. Everything's working. All right, now let's try the actual fog lights or the ditch lights. What's going on guys? It's the next week and it's Monday. Today we're going to be focusing on the rear of the 4Runner. We're going to try to get that C4 bumper installed today. So we have a bunch of things that we need to remove on the back. We have to remove the blind spot monitor sensors. Those cannot be used with the C4 bumper so we have to eliminate those completely. We have some other brackets and stuff we need to remove on the side and then we have to do some hammering and some massaging here on the back side of the wheel well just so that the C4 bumper fits a little bit better and there's extra clearance for bigger tires and more articulation.
more smashing. Smashing is done. I gotta pull the taillights out and I gotta take the bracket off here underneath it. And then I have to take out this little plug, drill a hole on this side, drill a hole on that side. Um, yeah, and then I'm just gonna probably grab some paint. I'm gonna paint over here where I was smashing that in. And I think we should be pretty good to go. Corey's spending some time getting the rear of the 4Runner all prepped up to get this C4 Overland rear bumper mounted up. We have an appointment to get the truck aligned on Wednesday, so we have to get this on the truck and secured. Even if it's not 100% buttoned up, we need it on there when we take it to get aligned. So he's doing some bashing, some cutting, some drilling to get all the components for this mounted up. And uh, something new for us is gonna be the dual swing outs. Um, it shouldn't be too much more difficult because those just get put on after the bumpers mounted up. So should be the same process as the one we did on the other customer's forerunner. And hopefully we learned a little bit from the last one. So this will go a little bit more smoothly. And hopefully by the end of the day today, this thing will be on the truck and uh, it'll be ready to go for alignment on Wednesday. Right now I'm putting in these filler panels for the bumper. Just got the bolts all started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up. And then I just bent this tab back just a little bit. And then I'm going to just kind of massage it until I have a nice reveal all the way across this whole panel here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down. the threads on the frame so the bolts go in nicely. It takes a little bit to get it in place it's just awkward there's a bunch of things that get in your way you got to move some stuff you got to hold the exhaust down out of your way uh, but we have it in place i just have the bolt started i'm gonna have to go ahead now and start uh, making some adjustments tightening the bolts getting the bumper to sit so we have a nice uh, even reveal on both sides and then after that's done we can start doing the dual swing out Corey got everything tightened up as far as the main part of the bumper is concerned. So it is locked in place, right? Yep. Um, so now these four bolts need to come back out. That is where the hitch receiver gets mounted. 
And then there is a plate to cover it up and make it look a little more pretty. Then once he has that mounted, he can put the kick plate to hide this uh, big gap here so you don't drop stuff underneath the truck. The bracket for the plugs for the trailer hitch. And then I guess the swing outs can go on. Yep, then we can do the swing outs. And then we can get all his cool accessories mounted on there and get it all sorted out. Get the spare on there. And uh, tomorrow I'm just gonna go around. I'm gonna button everything up, make sure everything is tight on the suspension, and then off for alignment. Yeah, get it down on the new wheels for alignment. Yep. So it's the next day and we woke up with a nice snowstorm that nobody prepped for. So the roads were pretty terrible today, but we probably got a good, I don't know, six inches here so far. But we here in Pennsylvania, we have a thing called Puntatani Phil, which, which is a groundhog. And they have a, some stupid event where he comes out and if he sees his shadow, uh, there's six more weeks of winter. And if he doesn't see his shadow, then we get an early spring. Well, he, he said we're supposed to have an early spring, but here we are and yeah, so let's go back inside and get this rear bumper finished today. So the first thing we're going to do today is get these bearings packed with grease for the swing outs. If I was smart, I'd probably have gloves on, but too late now. I go and tighten this down I'm just looking for a little bit of drag on this I don't want it to swing freely I want you to be able to just like push it and it'll go for a little bit and then come to a quick stop That's pretty good our spare on there. We also have to mount the mount for the license plate. So they have two different options, one that mounts inside the spare tire or one that mounts off the side here. I don't know which one we're gonna go with. I'll probably ask Jeff and see what he wants to do with that. Uh, but then we can go ahead, we'll throw the wheels and tires on the rest of the floor and we're gonna go around, make sure all the suspension's good to go, get it down on its wheels, and then she'll be ready for alignment tomorrow.
So we left the center cap off. We're not sure where we want to put the license plate. We have two options. You can either mount it, kind of, there's a bracket that comes out of the center of the wheel, or it can go over here. I think we're kind of in agreement that it'll probably go over here as long as it doesn't block access to the traction boards or the cans over here. But we're gonna try it out first. I already told him that. Did you? Yeah. We also have to mount the mount for the license plate. Sorry, I'm sorry, he already told you. He already told you that, so never mind. So we just got the spare on there. We're gonna have to actually pull it back off because I tried to undo the latches and the, the top latch here. It hits the tire. So we either need to go up with the tire or we need to go to the right with the tire so that this latch can clear and you can fully open up the uh, swing out. bumper's done and this thing goes for alignment tomorrow. Corey got it on the ground sitting on the wheels for the first time since we got it and he's torquing the rest of the suspension components. There's certain things you want to torque when it's on the ground like we always do so he's getting that torqued down making sure that the suspension is all good to go for tomorrow and we'll get this thing for an alignment. Okay I'm pretty sure today is day seven. It's Wednesday. This thing goes for alignment in the afternoon. We have this mounted up. We did mount the traction boards on here. They're nice and sturdy. We don't have his Rota Packs accessories. He's gonna have to mount those and the high lift is also not here. So he's gonna have to mount those when he gets home. But this thing is ready to hit the road. Corey temporarily put the OEM, uh, the factory intake box back in so that we can get it to the alignment shop. We will be later installing the ARB Safari snorkel and the TRD intake. Intake is gonna be a pretty quick install. The snorkel, isn't too bad. We've done two on our trucks, but the ARB is just a little bit different. But we're going to get that stuff installed. And then we have the Sherpa roof rack, the light bar. Corey's got to button up the lighting on these lights back here on the bumper. We also have to add the license plate light to keep him legal on the road. And we're going to have to relocate the camera back to here. And the bumper does come with a harness for that. So this morning, we're just going to spend our time getting this thing to make sure it's good for the road. And then we're going to get it over for alignment after lunch. All right, so came in this morning and we got everything buttoned up on the Forerunner so that we can take it down the road, all the wiring. I uh, zip tied everything up out of the way, hooked everything up to the battery, like the winch that needed to be done yet. Um, we put the license plate on. And yeah, so now we have a little bit of time before we go ahead and take it for alignment. So I'm gonna go and get the roof rack on from Sherpa. So I'm just getting everything prepped here and we can start assembling it. Today's task is going to be the rear camera and the license plate light. This isn't really a hard job, it just takes a while because fishing the wire through all of this takes definitely a lot of time and patience to, to get it through everything. So yeah, that's today's job. All right, guys, we're back with another day. Yesterday was a very long day for Corey. He got the rear camera all wired up, but it was a bit of a challenge. Uh, running all those wires all the way through the tailgate, getting it past the window tracks and things like that. He got it done though, it's all buttoned up, and he also got the license plate light wired. So today he decided to get all of the electrical wiring out of the way. 
Um, he has a few things left, I guess. It would include the roof light bar, the air compressor, and the lights in the rear bumper that this customer wants hooked up to their reverse lights. So he's gonna get all that squared away today. And if he has a little bit of extra time, we might be able to also get started on the rock protection for the bottom of the truck. He has a full skid plate set and the rock sliders. And then I think that's everything, Corey. Is there anything I missed? Snorkel. The snorkel intake. and the intake. Yes, uh, uh, the diff, snorkel will be a big breather. One. And the diff breather. Uh, I guess the diff breather is gonna have to go on before all the rock protection. So we'll have to do that first and then we can get to all those larger items. Get this thing finished up and back to the customer. I'm sure he's really excited to see the finished product. I'm going to dissect this. The yellow wire on this plug is powering the reverse lights. So I'm going to tap into that to get power and then I'm going to run two legs off of that. One going to this light, one going to that light over there. So then when he puts it in reverse, he'll have power at those lights instead of running the wiring all the way up front to a switch or something like that. He wants them wired into the reverse lights so this is going to be an easy way of doing that. beginning of the next week. It is day 11 working on this 4Runner. Uh, this morning I came in and I just started, uh, I finished buttoning up the air compressor and all the wiring for that. I just am waiting for some lines to come in that I can run from the compressor to the tank that we have and then from the tank I'm going to run a line up to the front here somewhere so that he has the air hookup right here and he doesn't have to pop the hood to, to get it hooked up. I'm going to wait on doing the rest of this stuff until the parts come in the mail. I'm going to do the rear diff breather, get that done, and then we can do skid plates, rock sliders, and then last thing to do is snorkel and the intake, and then we should be done. So the rear diff breather is all hooked up. We have it over there nicely on, si on the side of the bracket for the air compressor. Uh, if you want to extend your front uh, diff breather and the actuator for the front diff, those are located right in between your uh, engine bay fuse box and your engine. So you'll see two little breather caps there. If you want to extend those up just so they're a little higher. I mean, they're still pretty high to begin with. Um, but if you want to extend them, those are right there. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish up the uh, plumbing for the air compressor. I got the lines in, as you saw. As soon as I opened this one, I was like, oh, this is probably too short. This is supposed to go from the air compressor to the tank. And as you can see, that's not going to reach, but it goes from this, which is 0.3 meters to a whole meter, which I'm gonna have, then you'd have like coiled up line there, which doesn't really make sense. So I might have to just make something work. And then we have, our longer line here. So that's gonna go into the other connector down here. And then I have plenty so I can run this up to the front somewhere. And then we have the bracket so I can mount it.
the snorkel's all done, everything is tightened down, and we have the silicone hose connecting it and run into the engine bay, we can get that TRD intake installed. You can see we have the supplied Safari scoop on the top, but this customer did go with an upgrade for that. So obviously this is gonna scoop up everything and anything that comes uh, into here. Uh, things like dust, dirt, and debris can get in there and they're gonna get caught by your filter so your engine won't be damaged, but your uh, filter life is gonna be severely harmed by all the dust that is gonna collect in there. Now some people, especially in rain and snow and stuff, will turn these backwards and that will help a little bit. But if you're in a dirty, dusty environment, that is still gonna act like a vacuum and pull all that down into your filter. Our customer grabbed this upgrade. Some people like to call it a mushroom cap. The official name is a cyclone. Basically what this does is it pulls air from the bottom through the screen and then it has fins and a little turbine in there that spins and it spins the air and throws all of the particulates and dirt, dust and debris out of this little slit in the back. That way, none of that makes its way to your air filter and it extends the life greatly. That is really important if you're gonna go on a long trip off road. Um, you should always have an extra filter with you, but this is just gonna give you an extra peace of mind and get your filter to last just that much longer. All right guys, Jeff's 4Runner is finally finished. It's been about two weeks. I have, well actually I'm not gonna say how many hours I have into it because you guys were supposed to guess. But it's done and it looks great. I can't wait for him to come and pick it up and see his reaction. He does not want to be on camera, which I respect that, so we are not going to put him on camera, um, but I'm sure he's going to be excited to get his 4Runner back and see it in the state that it is. If you guys stay tuned to our next video, we're gonna do a quick walk around of his 4Runner. We're gonna go over everything that we did install in a little bit more of details, but without further ado, here is Jeff's new built 4Runner. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching Jeff's 4Runner get built. Make sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more content just like this. And uh, if you guys are looking to get your 4Runner Tacoma or Tundra built by Yoda Expedition, you can shoot us an email at the email below down in the description. Until next time, thank you guys for watching.